So hi, uh, thanks for uh, checking out uh, According to Pete today. Uh, I wanted to show you a project that I did over Christmas break. Uh, and this is a project for any of y'all out there who have a spouse who maybe looks a little dubiously upon your hobbies that you share with us. I did uh, 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 LED lighting under my cabinets. Cool, right? And I did it using uh, the five pack LEDs, the high power LEDs that we sell, and also the Femto Buck regulator. So I wanna tell you about how that thing works. Um, and before I can tell you about how that thing works, we gotta do a little review of uh, what an inductor actually does, because it's a magical, magical thing. Cool? Uh, quick inductor uh, review. This is a cross section of an inductor. Let's pretend I've got some current coming in here. It goes around in a core, like a spiral like that, and it comes out here, okay? Now what happens is, when you start to put current into this conductor, and it'll, it, it goes all the way, right? All, all of these cross sections, this is a cross section. I didn't say a cross section. Uh, as current starts to increase, you get a magnetic field that starts to expand around each one of these things, okay? And down here too. Now, what's that good for? What happens is that that expanding magnetic field when it cuts across each of these other conductors, it presents an electromotive force in the opposite direction that it is externally applied, okay? So the effect of that, what happens is, no, oh, that is not visible at all, is that over time, current will do this, okay? So it'll start out slow, it'll gradually build, and then this thing becomes a dead short, just a piece of wire, okay? Let's move on. So to expand on that, that plot that I just showed you, let's pretend that, oh, let's, let's just throw a uh, switch in here, shall we? Okay, so I got a battery here, I got an inductor here, I got a resistor here. So when you throw that switch, I showed you what happens on the inductor, right? It very slowly starts to rise in current. Um, conversely, what's happening is, at the very beginning of that, all the voltage is across that, and none of the voltage is across here. So consequently, if you'd have measured this, its voltage increase is gonna look kinda like that over time. It's slowly going to increase in voltage, okay? I've got a load, I've got a battery. Um, now, when I close this switch, as I said, what's gonna happen is current, or uh, yeah, current is going to rise slowly uh, through the inductor. Now, so what does that mean? Well, that means across this resistor, the voltage is going to rise slowly because current is gradually increasing, okay? Now, when I open that switch again, what happens is all the energy that's stored in the magnetic field of this thing, the magnetic field is gonna collapse really fast because the current went from something above zero to zero immediately. And so that's gonna collapse really fast and it's gonna try to drive current this way, but I've got an infinite resistance right here. So what happens is you might get like, a, like an arc here. Ow! So you don't want an arc there, that's beside the point. Now watch this. If I add a diode right there, close the switch, circuit charges up uh, like that, open the switch, field starts to collapse, but now, because this thing is pushing out current, conventional current flow, right? That diode is now forward biased and it is conducting still. And so it'll, it'll discharge according to the time constant of the L and the R, okay? Now, watch this. So that's no longer a mechanical switch. We're gonna turn that into a MOSFET or something, okay? And, we can drive it with a clock, right? So this thing is on and it's off and it's on. Right, right, right. And if I adjust the, um, the pulse width, right? This is, this is pulse width modulation now, right? I'm achieving an average current through this thing by uh, this clock and adjusting the pulse width. So this thing is gonna have a certain T on and T off. I'll draw that in a different plot. Now, check this out. If I set up a little feedback network there, V-Sense, V-Sense, and I watch that for like a given voltage out here, I can adjust the timing of this thing, right? If I have a constant clock at like, ooh, let's say one megahertz, for example, um, if I adjust like the time base of this thing, so if I'm on more often than I'm off, 
this voltage out here is going to tend to rise until it reaches uh, a current equilibrium with the load, right? So that's a buck regulator. <laughs> Except of course, now what you're gonna have at the output, you're not gonna have this ultimately. What you're gonna have is you're gonna have, there's gonna be a time where it's charging and a time that it's discharging, okay? Now something about buck regulators, while we're talking about it, this is noise. This is noise on your output voltage. So one thing they'll do, of course, is throw a big old cap in there and filter it, okay? So I need a clock here and I need a sense here. Well, you can make something like this out of a, any microcontroller, right? But ultimately, uh, there are chips available that do exactly this. Uh, in the case of the femtobuck regulator, it is the AL8805, I think is the part number that I just wrote down. My memory's not working. Um, so that's, uh, so there's a dedicated part and you throw these parts at it and this is how a buck regulator works in essence. Now, a couple of notes while we're out here talking about this, what the output is actually going to look like, right, is it's going to assume an average DC voltage, okay? And this, this is like, this is the clock frequency that the logic is, is running at. Um, and the cap filters this to some degree. But check this out now. If you draw more current, or, or relatively more current, so say I'm drawing an amp from any given regulator and I start drawing an amp and a half, it'll go from this up to this. The, the, the frequency will be the same, but the noise will be bigger, okay? And so every buck regulators, they're, it's a noisy sort of thing, right? So when you're designing with these things, you have to consider how much noise your ultimate project will withstand. In the case of an LED driver, pfft, don't care. Um, if I'm driving audio or something, the frequency being high should be enough to not be a problem, but it's still a thing you wanna think about, okay? And so you might have to adjust the size of the inductor or eh, it varies. But we didn't wanna talk about that. We just wanna talk about high level stuff, okay? Power out equals power in times an efficiency factor, okay? And since there's no real lossy components in this, except for the load and the sense, this thing can be like, uh, in the case of the AL8805, uh, the data sheet specs up to 98% efficient. That's really good, okay? If I was using a linear regulator, I got, I got a V plus here and my thing here and my load out here and it goes to ground and I got 12 volts here and I got five volts here and I'm drawing an amp, all that extra power is dropped inside this thing as heat. For a battery, that's no good. So these things end up looking really, really sweet. Other advantage of this, is you can have a really wide input voltage range and all this has to do to accommodate it is change the duty cycle of the pulse, okay? It's super sweet. It's, it's almost a no loss sort of thing. The buck regulator that I just showed you is not quite what the uh, femto buck is, okay? The femto buck is a constant current source LED driver, but it is a buck configuration. Let me show you. When this thing turns on, right, you see, you see the basic pieces. There's the inductor. There's, there's the, uh, the diode that it, that it flows back through. Here's the load, right? These are the LEDs that we're driving. Here's my filter cap. Now here's my sense resistor, okay? So sensing a current, right? We pass a current through a very small resistance. We measure the voltage and go, aha, it's that current, right? This is the switch, okay? So if you, and what the switch does is it connects to ground, all right? So picture this switch being low, tied to ground. What happens is um, you charge through V in, and that's, you know, goes to the part, but that's you know, whatever. Goes through the sense resistor, right? This diode is reverse bias, so not in a circuit goes through the sense resistor, goes through the load, goes through the inductor, and then to ground. Cool? Now, when the switch gets turned off, now this is an open switch, so the inductor field collapses, it's gonna try to keep pushing current through. But it can't go that way, so it's gonna go this way. It's gonna go through that diode, and it's gonna come up and do the whole thing again until the logic clocks and it charges up again, okay? so. Constant current drive. 
in the case of the femto buck, we set it at 350 milliamps. I know that's not the full capability of the LEDs, but uh, we were sort of shooting for something that you could augment if you wanted to and would greatly extend the life of the three watt LEDs that you're driving. For my project, um, this is the basic building block that, that I'm working with. So I have a femto buck regulator and I have five LEDs, okay? These, comes in, these, these come in bags of five on our, on our storefront. Um, particularly for my kitchen, I'm using the warm white. Eh. Um, specifics about this, let's see. I'm actually driving this with, um, my source is 20 volts and it is an old laptop power supply that I had lying around. Right, the, the, the really cool thing about this, the, the Femto Buck uh, LED driver, is that you can put a wide range of voltages into this thing. And I got a lot of power supplies lying around that go mm, somewhere between there, right? Um, in my garage, for example, I have this old power supply that uh, has a 28 volt source, and I've got LEDs running on that. Um, so it's not too picky about that. So I've got five LEDs. Uh, my plus comes out of the Femto into uh, the anode of the first LED and they're all just in series all the way back to the negative input on this guy. 20 volts in, ground, that's it. Now, the LEDs specifically, like you know the starboards that these things come in, they're rated for three watts, all right? So at three watts, I expect that thing to get pretty warm, right? But at 350 milliamps, and I measured, I measured these things, right? the, the spec sheet says, oh, I could run anywhere between 3.2 and 3.8 volts, but I'm consistently getting at 350 milliamps, three volts out of each of these. And it's, it's like the, the, the top of this is 15.0 volts, it's really close. So each one of these is dropping a little more than a watt, about 50 milliwatts more. And honestly, it's, it's a little warm, but it's inconsequential. It's, it's never gonna be a thing I ever have to worry about again. Here are the parts of interest. This is the three watt LED, okay? So this thing will dissipate up to three watts without causing trouble. And by trouble, I mean it's not gonna melt the solder, I hope. Uh, I'd probably heat sink the thing a little bit and I'll describe some of that in the work that we're doing. Uh, but that's, that's the guy. Then there's this guy, the Femto Buck Regulator. This tiny little board rocks my tiny little world. I, I got so many projects lined up for this thing, I can't even tell you. So here's the apparatus uh, as, uh, as it is. Now, when I originally did this um, in, the, in the test mode, right, I had this masking taped up here, so just janky is all, you know, uh, and, and everybody's looking like, oh, it all looks so nice, I can't even believe it. But that looks like, uh, you know, and I didn't want to keep it. So what I did was I went to Home Depot and I bought some 3 8 inch uh, aluminum C-channel. And that's what I got here. Pro tip, when you get this stuff from uh, Home Depot, it doesn't look very good. But if you take an orbital sander and hit it with like 220 or something for three to five seconds, it looks like you know what you're doing. The aluminum helps for a couple of reasons, but uh, basically, right, each of these LEDs is an inch, roughly. So what I did was I drilled holes through the channel and I spaced these things at seven inches, which is almost completely arbitrary. I just wanted to spread them out. And uh, you just wire them in series. And as you can see, I got a red lead coming. This is the Femdo buck, right? So I put some, uh, I put some heat sink on, or heat shrink on that. Fits real nice in there. And then you just plus all the way down here and minus just daisy chains. And that's it. Now the aluminum, this is running at 350 milliamps, okay? So these things don't generate a lot of heat, but, if I wanted to run it up to 700 milliamps, which is what they're spec'd for, I believe, uh, I do expect them to drop heat. And if I can just squeeze in a little bit of thermal tape in there or something, or even some heat sink compound, now this whole thing becomes a pretty nice heat sink. And I still don't have to worry about heat. So that is buck regulators, constant current buck LED drivers, and uh, my Christmas LED lighting project. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I will catch you next time, about a month or so out. Um, if you have any suggestions for future videos or comments regarding this one or questions, whatever you got, put it in the comment section down below, or you can email us at feedback at sparkfun.com with according to Pete in the subject line. And until next month, goodbye.